What's going on? Today we're gonna to talk about upward mobility. I was born into being poor, went to abject poverty, then went to middle class, then went to upper middle class, then went to rich. This is possible in America. And there are countless stories of people who have done the same thing. But what I wanna do is kinda of give you a template on the things that you need to do so you can make that upward mobility climb. Now, let's go ahead and ask about why do you wanna be upwardly mobile? First of all, the air up here is nice. Let me go ahead and just give you a greater, a good example of upward mobility. Whenever I go out with a chick because I'm pulling the right type of women, I've never have a have to conversation about their phone. I've never, on recent dates, that has never been an issue where they were in their phone. Because essentially, when you make yourself classy, you attract classy. You don't have these issues. You don't have these problems. You don't have these little hiccups. Let me tell you the story of someone who was born into privilege. Years ago, I bought these stools off next door and I got them from this chick by the name of Darby. And Darby had that look. So I went ahead and I found her Facebook page and I saw that she and everyone on her Facebook page all had that look, the look of money. Now, once you start the upperly mobile climb. First of all, you've got to educate yourself. This is really important. The money matters greatly, but the education, because this is one of the things that I found with the upper echelon. The women in upper echelon don't have tattoos. They don't have crazy fingernails. They don't have crazy habits. They're usually submissive, demure, agreeable, easy to deal with because they have a certain level of class. Part of this journey, because I went through it and it really started to intensify when I got here on YouTube because I went from living in a boarding house, poverty, abject poverty, working crappy jobs to running a multi-million dollar corporation. I can tell you, but the most important thing you have to do is the work. Let's talk about the work. Like this morning, I got up, I worked out and I went ahead and I worked on my business. And this is one of the biggest things because I can tell you exactly what I did. And in this video, I will. But if you don't do the work, you're not going to get the results. It's just not going to happen. So you got to do the work. Like when I was talking about how I was developing my Craigslist protocols, my Craigslist marketing system, I put in work. I was doing this in the morning. I was doing it in the evening. I was doing it at night. I was doing it seven days a week. You got to put in the work if you want to make this climb from where you are to the upper mobile class. All right. So we had that conversation. First thing that I did was I educated myself because if you've noticed people upon certain economic stratas have different behavior. Let's take the largest economic strata, the poor class. They even have certain kind of cars that they drive. Like, like a little kid who's in the poor class, he's going to expire to get a Dodge Charger or a Mustang because where he is, if someone has a Charger or a Mustang, that they're rich. So someone in the middle class, his aspirations is going to be totally different because see, the big thing is exposure. And this is one of the things I think that helped me make this climb was I was exposed to business owners as a child. Mr. Youngblood, Mr. Glover, Simmons Machinery. I was exposed to these people who had these businesses because like uh, Glover Campbell, Mr. Campbell, he was a pharmacist. He used to take these hunting trips and all up in his pharmacy, he had these heads, these animals mounted. And once I began to investigate how expensive those trips were, because he would do it two or three times a year. That was like, he was making a lot of money. You know, he was trying to mentor me, trying to educate me, because I used to hang out in the pharmacy. And one of the things is, you've got to earn your way, pay your way. Like right now, there are many people that want to be in the orbit of wealthy people. They want to be around wealthy people. I'm going to tell you, and after many, many, many conversations in first class business owners, if you're not on that level, they're not going to confide in you. They're not going to share with you on that deep, intimate level. They're just not gonna do it. They will talk to you, they'll be nice to you, but they're not gonna give you the jewels because you're not on that level. Because like one of the things, I get a lot of people who want to quote, work for me. Let's talk about that. I'm not gonna hire someone who wants to work for me to absorb all this knowledge and bounce. I'm, I'm not hiring anyone like that. 
that doesn't serve me. Anyone that works for me is gonna be a worker bee. They're gonna do the services, the tasks that I need done. And this is another part of people who are trying to move up in class. Like I wanna work for a millionaire, I wanna work for a billionaire for free so I can soak up this knowledge and bounce. That does not serve my agenda and I don't entertain those things. And this is another thing. To get into the upper class, you've gotta be able to stand on your own. And this is where the hours of work, I'm gonna tell you how I did because I grew up uh, probably from a single parent household. And even, but one of the things as a child, I used to read voraciously. I was a big, big, big reader. And as I joined the military, that kind of moved me to the lower middle class. And then I got a job in the hospital and that kind of kept me in the lower middle class. And then I fell and I ended up in a boarding house living with crackheads, drug addicts, alcoholics, and criminals. So at that point, and I spent three years in that purgatory. But once again, I did not start doing drugs. I did not turn to a life of crime. What I did after I got my head together is I began to study. Because once again, on each level, there's different behavior. And if you're not mirroring that behavior, you will not be accepted at large by the people in that class. And what you will notice is it's a pyramid at the bottom or the poor people the biggest base the widest and then, then you move up to the top there's lower middle class then that's a little bigger then you move up to upper middle class then you move up to rich then you move up to wealthy and the space between wealthy and rich is very small only 10 percent of the country makes over six figures and when you get to seven figures we're talking about three percent or less and then when you're getting talking to people with a net worth of 10 million that is the one percent so this class Time is you, you got to know because the money matters. You, you're making fifty thousand dollars. You have no investments. You are just a worker bee. You're not going to make it. So essentially, this is what it's going to look like because you can. And this, there are many people around here in this neighborhood who got there that way because their parents left them a house. They have average jobs, but they live in a wealthy neighborhood. They grew up here and they have a paid-off house. So even if they have a regular job, they're still able to rub elbows and mix with the upper class and then mirror their behavior because they don't have a mortgage. This is common. You will see a lot of young couples because there's a young couple over by Chastain Park because, you know, I saw where they live. The story is their parents left them their house. Once again, their children are going to be exposed to the habits and the behaviors of the wealthy. Look, let's just go ahead and talk about George W. Bush, who was a C student who rose to be president. George Bush argumentatively was not as smart as Obama, but George W. Bush II or whatever his name is, is wealthier than Obama because his father was wealthy. This makes a huge difference because you could be a C student, but if you have this uh, wealth education, you're hanging around certain people, you're able to connect, you will get further in life. You don't have to be that smart. And this is one of the things, because right now we have many people who are looking at formal education versus life education. And life education is what's gonna get you up to the sweet spot because let's, let's just, just be honest, you can work really, really hard. You can work from sunup to sundown. But if you're not in an environment that appreciates that hard work, you're just not really going to get ahead because see your hard work. And this is one of the things I had to learn. I had to create an environment where my hard work yield juicy returns because I was working, I was pouring tar on roofs. I was doing all kinds of crappy jobs. I was working real hard. I would go home, I would be sore, but I was still poor. If you're in that poor class, even working the second job is not really gonna get you ahead. Once again, you gotta have the environment, and this is why I'm in this YouTube online environment, which I operate very well in because I know how it works. So I operate in an environment where my hard work rewards me. You may operate in an environment where you can literally work 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and really not get ahead because there's a few things that you don't understand. That for you to move up the social economic class, you've got to manage your money. Now, there are people who like Dan Bl Blazerian. He, you know, is makes money. He's the king of Instagram and all this other stuff. But Dan Blazerian, when he was living in this wealthy neighborhood in California, his neighbors never accepted him. See, Dan Blazerian is a internet person, but he's not in the social economic class of the wealthy. He's not. You know, he may look like it. He may have certain trips, but he is not accepted by them because his father was a criminal and he didn't really grow up in that class. Even though he has a lot of fame, he has a lot of toys, he has a lot of women, 
Dan, he is not part of that class. And once again, this is where the education comes in because Dan Blazerian was doing things that people in that socioeconomic class completely hate. So this is one of the things. So you got, your behavior has got to be on point. And if you want to date an upwardly, a beautiful, socially, economically high level woman, you can't come at her with rudimentary game. It ain't gonna work. She may date you. She may even let you have a little sex, but you're never gonna be in a relationship with this chick because she has to represent to her class. And if you do not fit her class, you're not gonna be up in her life. Cause she, like I said, she may go out with you. She may let you slide in at 12 PM. I was dating this attorney who was like a Cosby kid. Her father was a dentist and she had these social manners. She never wore weave. She never had these ghetto braids. We got together because there is a certain language pattern that the upper middle class uses. And I was able to mimic, mirror that language pattern where she brought me into a circle. She introduced me to all of her friends because she, even though I was in the storage auction business, I knew how to dress. I knew how to act. I knew how to speak. I knew what to say, what not to say. Because once again, once you get to this upper Upper level, the game is very different. I want you to think of it as a pyramid. At the bottom are poor people. That's the largest segment of the world, really. And it's the largest segment of American society. And for you to climb out of that, you're going to have to educate yourself. You're going to have to change yourself. And you're going to have to make money because money is a very big part of this. And this is something that many people discount because you will have people who literally have rich friends who will cake them, who will do things for them, but they'll never be fully accepted as one of those people. And I'm here to tell you, I'm in an, I'm like a bachelor in a neighborhood full of married people. And they look at my life. Like one time I had some wild stuff going on here and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was to talk in the neighborhood for a minute. But once again, the upper level behaves and does things differently. The 9.9%, .9%, which is the buffer zone between the 1% and let's say middle class to lower middle class. There are some people who upper middle class that are in that 9.9%. .9%, there are certain people who are not, depending upon the income. The 9.9% .9 is the buffer zone. And that's where you want to get in to operate because it's easier to ascend from the 9.9% .9 to the 1%. The climb from the bottom is hard and behavior and culture are a big part of this. And this is one of the reasons that I talk about the incendiary, insidious black ghetto culture that keeps people down. I've done several videos, actually I deleted those videos, talking about the new black girl, the new black man. And there is an emergence of people who are realizing that if I adopt these behaviors, these cultural traits, I'm not gonna be that successful in life. And they're assiduously pushing back on that and avoiding that and starting to adapt success traits not white people traits but success traits because if you're white you're Chinese African if you adopt these traits and deploy them in the world you will be successful and this is a big big issue keeping people at the bottom of the pyramid is the absolute refusal to adapt success traits because part of this is culture culture is a really really tricky thing culture will dictate my my behavior, like I said, let's take Omni and the Hellcat, my favorite whipping boy. Omni and the Hellcat, not Omni and the Lambo, not Omni and the Porsche, but Omni and the Hellcat. That tells me where his thinking is and that tells me why the things that befell him happened to him because even though Omni and the Hellcat had a lot of money, he did not move up social classes. Look at his videos, look at who's in his videos, look at who he hangs around, look, there's, there's very few people who are like socially mobile. You know, he may be hanging around some big bigger YouTubers, but he did not make the mental and educational shift. He got the money, but he didn't have the education, which is why he left it. And to the person who left that comment, I know exactly what happened to Omni. He got all his money seized. He got all his property seized. But once again, culturally, Omni and the Hellcat appeals to the people at the bottom of the pyramid because they're like, look, I can hit a good lick. I could be like Omni and the Hellcat. I can get me a Hellcat. This is educational. If Omni had just one decent financial financial advisor around him, what befell him wouldn't have happened. Then again, I don't even know if he would have listened because just listening to him, he seems to do what he wants to do whenever he wants to do it. You get to this level and this happens. Uh, Cardi B, Offset, many rappers will ascend on a financial level, but they'll never get the class. They'll never get the culture. They'll never get the education. And they will not be accepted by the people who grew up in that class. You know, they may be hung out. They may hire them to do a 
party or something like this. They may employ them as a servant, but they're not going to befriend these people because these people don't know how to act. They don't know how to behave. And they have these culturally induced traits and habits that keep them mentally at the bottom of the pyramid, even though they have lots of money. Give you a prime example of what behavior and education would do. The guy who played Jeffrey on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, he comes across as cultured, well-spoken. You know, that's how he got that part because it was like, this guy was so dope, we want to put him on The Fresh Prince because of the way that he acted. So he put himself in a position to make hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions a year, playing a character on television because of the way that he spoke, the way that he behaved, his mannerism. And this is something that you could do. If you want to extend to the upper class, increase your vocabulary. I'm serious, this is how I did it. I have an exceptionally huge vocabulary. I will be talking to people and I'll use words and they'll just like, what, what does that mean? Because this is something, because like, remember, as a kid, I used to read and one of the things that I would do is I would read books and if I didn't understand the word, I would go immediately look it up. So this dramatically increased my vocabulary. Because see, you can always talk down to people with a basic vocabulary, but when you're able to use those $10 words and speak to people, on that level, it is a game changer. Just increasing your vocabulary, that is, and learning how to speak and learning how to represent yourself. That is one of the things that will move you from poor to middle class, to rich, then to ultimately wealthy. Just learning how to speak and represent yourself. And this is something that you need to do because your children will adopt your speech pattern. You ever notice that you'll meet these little kids who speak so articulately? Look at the parents. Look at the circle of people that they have. Speaking patterns, language patterns are a big, big part of this. It's huge. And one of the things, you know, bless her heart, my grandmother taught me how to read before I went to school, my language developmental centers were started developing really, really early. And this is one of the things that will make a big difference in your life. Learning how to speak, learning how to represent yourself, learning how to talk to people on all spec. Because I used to be like a chameleon. Like if I was just hanging with some people, my vocabulary would match theirs. But the minute that I got around like CEOs or highly paid people or rich people, my vocabulary would switch. They didn't even notice it. And you know, it was so funny. It was just automatic. It was like my my superpower transform. Well, hey, this is Glendon Karen. I mean, it's one of the craziest things that how that makes such a big difference because when you speak the language, when you speak a certain language pattern, this makes people feel comfortable. And if they feel comfortable around you, it's easier for them to accept you. Let's go ahead and do it in the bullet point. Number one, you got to get some money. Number two, you got to educate yourself. Number three, you got to mirror the behaviors of the people in that social class. This is how you can do it. Over years, in the business. And this is one of the reasons that I'm doing the corporate toolbox because I want 50,000 corporate citizens in the next five years because once you get your money right, because this is how it used to be in the old days, rich folks used to send their kids to school and it was called finishing school. They already had the money. They just wanted them to be better, to be eloquent, to be articulate. And that's why they sent them to school because they already had the money. Once again, in the East the United States of America, if you were not a landowner, you could not vote back in the day. The money is a critical, critical component of this, but just as critical is the education and the speaking pattern. So if you want to move up into the upwardly mobile class, I have an offer for you. Right below is the corporate toolbox where I teach you how to create a tax efficient holding company system. And then I also teach you how to start a business from scratch. Whether you're a rookie or a seasoned business owner, this course will help you tremendously. So the links below, the price will be going up in November. So go ahead and get it now. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next video.